love coming out tonight in the rain. It's one of those nights where no one likes to get out, but appreciate you coming out. At this time, I would like to call to order the Hardin County Board of Education meeting. And uh, if you would, join me in singing the pledge to the flag up here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll have the uh, board commitments by Don Johnson. To improve our effectiveness, the Hardin County Schools board team commits to keep children first, listen, be prepared, be professional, demonstrate financial stewardship, represent the entire district and support district goals, and support board decisions. Thank you. And uh, we have a lot of recognitions tonight. Uh, I think some students got held off till this month. Normally we do it uh, in January, and it's been a messed up season for the last couple of years. So, Mr. John Wright will take care of that for us. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you can tell, we have lots of recognitions uh, this evening. That's why we have this February board meeting here at the Performing Arts Center. So I would like to thank uh, Bart and his team for always making, uh, for always accommodating our, our crowd, and, and they do a a super, super job. First of all, Mr. Chairman, I would like, well, I guess you need to pass those resolutions. So let, let's do that. I apologize for that. We do. All right. We have a resolution uh, for student and staff recognition. Do I hear a motion? I move that we accept the resolution as written. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good right, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I apologize for skipping over that. We would like to, first of all, recognize um, our Stronger Together Award uh, recipients that we did not get to recognize in January, and three, uh, rather four, wonderful individuals, and you'll hear about those. First of all, Mr. Bergen, come on up here, young man. And there is, a, yes, there is a plaque there for, for these folks. Go ahead. Let's, let, let me tell you a little bit about Zachary. He's a seventh grade uh, student at West Harden Middle School. And listen, to, uh, Mr. Chairman, to what this young man did. He recently exhibited a great deal of kindness and compassion in this way. He, uh, West Harden uh, Middle School has an auction twice a year. Students use Laker loot, which is fake money. Um, they earn throughout the year for positive academic acts and behavior acts. Um, to bid on the donated items at the, at the auctions. There are several big items like Chromebooks, TVs, bicycles. So Zachary bid everything he had, which is $451 in Laker loot, uh, for a bike for his friend who had never had a bike. He could never take that, uh, he, he could have taken that bike home for himself or bought something else for the Laker loot that he earned. Instead, he gave all of his earnings to a friend. Thank you, young man. Appreciate you. <laughs> Next is Ms. Karen Compton. She's our Stronger Together Staff Award winner. Uh, she is a medical science pathway teacher at the HCS Early College and Career Center. She's truly dedicated to her students and takes a holistic approach to her success. A student recently emailed e uh, EC3 Principal Dan Robbins to share that Ms. Compton makes it a point to make sure that all students have everything they need for success. She has made gift baskets for students to include things that young people need. She keeps change for students to use any time they need for something from the vending machine and keeps a snack corner in her classroom for students who do not want to ask for money. The student, uh, also went in his or her email, said that Ms. Compton is simply an amazing teacher and friend. She certainly deserves an award for her kindness. And you got it. Thank you, Ms. Compton. We appreciate you. <laughs> Next, we'd like to recognize my friends, uh, Holly Sexton and Megan Stiff. They together co-own Boss Lady Coaching. The Boss Lady Coaching website says that the company supports women as they develop habits of bravery. This is a great descriptor for what Boss Lady Coaching uh, owners Megan Stiff and Holly Sexton did for our district's seventh grade girls at the Girls Incorporated Conference in October. Our district's middle schools brought the young ladies to the Hardin County Extension Office where they met in groups with various community leaders about careers and answered their questions about past success. Boss Lady Coaching found mentors and asked them to speak to the young ladies. In the years past, they have brought various speakers to Girls Inc. activities who brought their insight to our young ladies about shattering glass ceilings. We certainly owe a debt of gratitude to Boss Lady Coaching 
for helping us help students succeed. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you. All right, next is our student recognitions, and, and Mr. Chairman, these uh, student groups, they're going to walk across this stage, and they're just going to say their name. They're not going to say their award or anything like that, but I'm going to introduce uh, these groups to you. First of all is the Central Harden High School Beta Club. Come on in, Bruins. Uh, these students succeeded at the, at the state beta club level, and uh, like I said, uh, it's on the, the resolution of recognition, and they're going to say their name as they move across. Cameron Miller. Brianna Blankenship. Presley Decker. Uh, Elizabeth Pepper. Graham Avis. Elena McNeil. Ashley Lowe. And students, if you would like to uh, gather there just as a small group, just to take a picture, just, so I'm sure moms and dads would love to have a picture with your group. Uh, I did not describe that out in the, in the hallway, so that's, that's my fault. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Scooch you in. Mom and da moms and dads want to. All right. Thank you, Bruins. Appreciate you. Okay. These students uh, represent the John Harden High School Beta Club, which did very well at state competition. Bulldogs. Lucas Cowan. Kiara Tucker. Kenneth Ritchie. Congratulations, guys. And, and moms and dads, on the resolution of recognition on our website, you can see uh, the accomplishments that these young men and women achieved. All right, North Harden High School Beta Club, Trojans. Peyton Custis. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> obviously, a lot more students uh, earned awards, uh, but obviously because of the rain and various other act uh, activities going on, they could not all be here. All right, East Harden High School uh, Beta Club. Come on in, Bruins. I think that's middle school. Yeah, East Harden Middle School. I'm sorry. I might have said high school. It used to be. Williams, Addison Garland, Presley Abel, Tabitha Riggs, Leah Riggs, Adeline Murray, Layla Abdel Rahman, Ashley Borders, Will Richardson, Carson Williams, Jude Tabor, Jack Malone. Kirsten Williams, Reagan Castor, Sarah Wall, Maddox Adams, Brody Evans, Claire Yates, Mallory Pretty, Kylie Davis, Krisha Patel, Emma Haynes, Colton Smith. Let's give them a hand, please. All right. Congratulations. Thank you all. Appreciate you. JTA, have somebody from JTA. JTA, come on up, Trojans. Zoe Maddox. Grayson Platt. Congratulations, guys. We appreciate you. No one from Creekside is here. They had one winner, Piper Wilcox. She finished second place in elementary fiber art. So congratulations to Piper. Okay, Heartland Elementary. Come on up, Bulldogs. All 
I'm sorry. Yes, this is also beta. All these students are beta club. Sorry, house you. I because have he Claire Kendra Bryson Kyler. Congratulations, guys. All right, good job. Appreciate you. All right, Lincoln Trail Elementary School Beta. Come on, Bruins. Cooper. Faith. Lucas. Finley. Madeline. Maggie. Vivian. Good job, guys. Congratulations. All right, this group of uh, Central Harden Bruins is, are all state band members, which that is not an easy process. These guys have worked hard in and out of the classroom. These are all state band members from Central Harden High School. Jonathan Devers. Lily Guillaume. Alex Wynn. Wyatt Wynn. Congratulations, guys. Awesome. And Mr. Chairman, the next group is our biggest group. Uh, these, are, uh, these young men and women are from the North Arden High School Band. In my 12 years in this role, I've never, we've never not had a North, a, a North Arden Band at this, uh, at this board meeting because they've always finished first, second, or third in state competitions. So uh, they have a tradition of excellence, and uh, you'll see why um, when these young men go across, uh, young men and women go across the stage, because they, they're just good. They're great. Let's see. Go ahead, guys. Jane for a lot. Zoe Maddox. Grayson Platt. Jaden Lathrop. Leah Sloan. Kayla Starling. Toby Smith. Catherine Latham. Brooke Russo. Jacqueline Hake. Marie Roth. Matthew Query. Nicholas Hake. Brooklyn Crawford. D'Angelo Hughes. Emily Hart. Alexis Bollinger. Jimmy Perkins. Kayla Bashlock. Tyler Pennington. Eric Castro. Christian Clater. Janiah Bell. Riley Eikenberry. Lily Maddox. Ella Cardona. Elena Wood. Selena Hyder. Keegan Williams. Adriana Bell. Caitlin McCall. Janitra Hawkins. Sophia Baumgartner. Lily Rose Hubbard. Rachel Reynolds. Caleb Train. Andrew Flickinger. Jediah Banks. 
Tasia Allen. Emily Simmons Lee. Latasia Lynn. Trinity Glover. Nicole Cook. <laughs> Siobhan Dean. Angela Heck. Nakaya Murphy. Robert Brown. Olivia Milton. Brayden Barber. Talia Carmichael. Deborah Myers. Uriah Council. Jihei Choi. Kana Lovata. Um, Timothy Scott. Savannah French. Jaden Rachelet. Naisha Borner. <laughs> Courtney Pittman. Jay Sean Bell. Gabriella Palomo. Keikoa Razzo Yandel. Catherine Patterson. Joey Cott. Thomas Logsdon. Riley Phillips. Lauren Wyckoff. Thank you. Gabriella McCoy. Michael Chandonet. Cadence Ward. Anna Wagner. Thomas Miller. Kayla Hamilton. Diego Harada. Zane Fagans. Connor Lake. Caitlin Matthews. <laughs> Zoe Myers, Taylor Holly, Will Meyer, Skylar Hansel, Zoe Garrido, Issa Patel, Blaine DeJerdy, Michael Rowe, Andy Sloan. Give them all a big hand, please. All right, moms and dads. All right, thank you, young men and women. We appreciate you. Good job. Mr. Chairman, we would be remiss if we didn't recognize uh, the uh, director, Kelsey Dunn, former director, Brian Froge, assistant director, Miles Kellett, and assistant director, Isaiah Kuomo. We're not. We're kind of done with recognitions, but we're kind of not. So, um, Mr. Stith is going to ask some members of the green teams at the schools. They're not on your resolution, but um, we just wanted to uh, bring them to you tonight. They're going to. Some of those groups will present to you. So, um, we'll do that here in just a second. 
as I was saying, uh, this, this is what it's all about. We have terrific students here in Hardin County Schools. Parents uh, spend endless hours uh, getting these students to these extracurricular activities that they participate in. Uh, you can just imagine uh, the amount of money that's been into a group like the band. That, that is one huge group, and it's a lot of a lot of work for the parents and everyone. And we certainly appreciate it. We, we've had a lot of uh, uh, they're champions. They really are. They've they've come a long ways, and uh, hopefully it'll pay off. Uh, there'll be a lot of things that they can do for the rest of their lives and enjoy music and different things that they've done. And uh, it's 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 great. We really appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, I am going to turn it over now to Mr. Stith and Mr. Kyle Lucas, our, our energy manager. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, board, for the opportunity to be here tonight to talk about our green teams. Uh, this is not a state champion recognition. I would argue, though, this is a local champion recognition. Uh, they're doing a great job saving the district money, and we have some awards. Uh, we have a good partnership with uh, Train. Uh, controls and uh, Miss Christy Fetch is here and really appreciate her work to help us uh, recognize and celebrate uh, our schools and what they're doing to, to save energy and, and to save resources. So I want to introduce Mr. Kyle Lucas. He's our energy manager. He works very closely with Miss Fetch and the green team, does a tremendous job. Not only does he help them uh, learn about ways to save energy in schools and ultimately at home, but uh, he takes it a step further. His, his knowledge and background in HVAC does a tremendous job saving the district resources and, and maximizing uh, those local revenue dollars that, that we have. So with that being said, I'm going to get quiet, and we're going to start bringing up some of our teams. Some of our teams have uh, two years. They, they won't get a plaque tonight. They got their plaque last year because they earned their certification uh, last year, but we do have some uh, four new schools that we'll be adding to those roles, and as they come across, we'll make mention of those. So Kyle, do you want to introduce our schools? Yeah, I'm, I'm proud to say that we have, you know, district-wide, you know, cooperation and participation in this uh, program, which really helps us in saving energy. Uh, and today I would like to introduce seven of those teams. Others had prior engagements and couldn't make it, but we have seven teams with us, and I, I want to introduce first uh, Cecilia Valley's green team. McCoy. Ava Smith. Kinley Blaine. Kennedy Smith. Macy Bland. Maya Newman. Next we have North Park Elementary. My name is Sabrina Morgan, and I am their sponsor. This is Amari Simmons. He's a little nervous today. Luke. Good job. Hey, Jayton. There you go. Awesome. Say your name. Garrett Ford. Good job, Garrett. Sophie. Awesome, Sophie. Javi. Awesome. Zoe. Good job, Zoe. Kira. Awesome. Mia. Awesome, Mia. Zayden. Say it again. Zayden. Awesome, Zayden. Della. Gabby. Good job, Gabby. Charles. Good job. Kaden. Come on, baby. Can you say your name? Can you say your name for me? What's mm -hmm. your name? Amelia. That's it. <laughs> Austin Stribal. Awesome. Give me a hand. Next, we have Lakewood Elementary. Let's go. 
Weston Sosa. Parker Waldrop. Kelly Newell. Aiden Gonzalez. Rachel Nall. Destiny Peters. Elijah Pickett. Next, we have Vine Grove Elementary. And My we, name's Amanda Patterson, and we have Leilani Boyd and Maggie Basham, and also Jalen DeMauro, who isn't here, but one of our members is here. C.T. Robinson. And, and I just want to say I do apologize to Cecilia Valley was one of those schools also that scored Energy Star for the second year in a row, and Vine Grove is one of those schools as well that's with us today. Next, we have Ronnieville Elementary that scored Energy Star for the first time in the 2021 school year. And Miss Pamela Johns, this green team sponsor. Kayla Haynes. Marshall Whalen. Jackson Miranda. Next, we have Heartland Elementary. They, too, scored Energy Star for the first time this year. Nolly Trent. Lucas Colby. Caitlin Chisholm. Aaron Jacobs. Gideon Studer. Ebony White. Galen Durrett. Marley Baker. Harper Swanson. Last, we have with us one of our high schools, Central Hardin High School, with the sponsor, Miss Argueta. Margaret Powell. Aubrey Konwinski. Alex Argueta. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you Miss Christy Fetch. Uh, she is a, uh, our partner with Train, and uh, I want to introduce her and uh, appreciate all the hard work that she's helped us accomplish. Uh, thanks to her, we were able to get these awards for these new stu schools that scored Energy Star, and I really appreciate all the work she's done to help us save money. Hello. As Kyle said, I'm Christy. I'm with Train. Uh, thank you for having me tonight. I just wanted to tell you briefly, um, when we say that these schools are Energy Star certified, that means that these schools are performing in the top quartile, so in the top 25% of like buildings. It's not something that's easily achieved, especially because we're not going to negatively impact the learning environment. We want to make it a better um, environment and help children with their indoor air quality. Um, and for every dollar that's not sent to the utility company, it can be reinvested in the district for resources. Um, so together we have partnered with a program called Intelligent Services. We use real-time building data at the buildings that are listed here on the screen. Uh, we use that along with real-time utility data to figure out how together can we work with green teams as well as the data that we're collecting with our engineers and make these um, more efficient envir environments. Um, so you can see as the program has grown, we started in 2017 together um, just with two schools and we've continued to integrate more schools to the, to the program. And as it stands today, we're at a net of $325,047 just for these, uh, let's see, what is it, uh, eight buildings. So um, just with those partnerships together. Again, it's an awesome partnership because this money is no longer going to the utility company, instead staying within the district. I'll turn it back over to Kyle. Currently, in pa and for the past year, KU has been offering some rebate programs um, through any specific building improvements that cut down en on energy consumption. Here are four of those projects that we've been able to do in-house with our own maintenance department. 
Uh, the top one you'll see there is North Middles parking lot. Uh, we were able to update that all to LED. Uh, and those, those numbers there are the rebate checks that we received from the utility company. So anytime we can get money back from them, that, that's a plus. Um, but you'll look at the three there at the bottom, J.T. Alton, we're eventually going to have that school all LED. Um, and right now what we've completed thus far is several classrooms on the main floor area, the cafeteria, and the gym. And we received a rebate check of $3,697 there, um, which is um, something that we received um, about 43% about uh, that rebate check towards the total cost of that equipment, which is really good. The, the asterisk beside it with the other ones as well is on LED tube replacement, they were offering $3 per tube, and we were able to get those at $4. So you can see that we made you know a 75% you know return on investment there at the initial cost. And um, you see those return checks that we got for Buildings and Grounds Maintenance Shop and West Harden Gym and Cafeteria and Choir Room. Um, again, a big shout out goes to the maintenance crew and the, the electricians that we have. Being able to do this all in house has been able to allow us to keep our ROI, ROIs down and allow us to progress with some of these rebate programs. You know, as anybody else having to hire in outside help, that kind of cuts into that return on investment, which with all these, we're seeing about a two to four year return on investment. So, this, this money that we've put forth into the classrooms is going to be coming back to us tenfold on our utility bills as well. Uh, with that being said, another big shout out needs to go to the Hardin County Schools Green Teams. I know we introduced them, you know, earlier, but I've got one that's with us here today that would like to, you know, discuss a little bit about what they do inside the school classroom. Um, they truly are conserving energy and creating a greener future for all of us. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Sabrina Morgan, sponsor for one of our youngest green teams in the district. These are all preschoolers and kindergartens. Yeah. So you want to tell them a little bit about what we do? We um, check of everybody saving energy and put um, door hangers of they're doing a good job or if they need to work on it. Eric, tell them what else we look for. We make sure all the sinks are off and we make sure there are no leaks. We look if it's computers are on, computers are off, and our smart boards on. That's right. Who else wants to say something? Anybody else? Charles? No? Okay. You want to say something, Stella? Go ahead and tell them what else we look for. We think. What? What were you going to say? You tell them. and tell all the teachers and all of our parents, too, how to save energy in the school, right? And what do we use to go around to check the, the rooms? See if the lights are off. We check to see if the lights are off. What do we, what do we use to go around and check with, Kira? Um, we help. We, um, we do. We have clipboards. We have clipboards and we make tally marks of things that we see that aren't. Uh, on the paper. On paper, that's right. So lots of stuff we do. We start them young and they are ruthless. <laughs> yeah. And, and while they are up here, I just turn your attention to the uh, PowerPoint here. These are pictures of them going through and handing those door hangers on the doors. And I've also got a video of one. I don't know if it'll show up. There we go. Let's see if it'll play. Oh, it, it didn't play. 
But they, they were given, you know, a door hanger to one of the teachers to congratulate them on doing good energy practices in, in the school. And this is another picture of North Park's kids. And uh, back here is a little picture of some older kids, some that already passed through, Cecilia Valley and Heartland. They're actually performing their energy audits on their Chromebooks with a Google form that I created. That way they can go through and use technology and actually as they submit each thing, each of their findings, they can send an email out to the whoever it needs to go to, whether it be the principal or somebody that's having issues with forgetting to turn lights off or whatnot. And lastly, I'd just like to take a time to recognize those nine schools that we've had in the district that scored Energy Star for the school year of 2020 to 2021. Um, and then the four new schools that we had was Heartland, North Middle, Radcliffe, and Ronnieville Elementary. The, the schools that also scored Energy Star again for the second year is Cecilia Valley, G.C. Burkhead, Creekside, Meadowview, and Vine Grove. I want to reiterate to you that this is an annual award, so it's no guarantee that just because you scored Energy Star the previous year that you'll score it again for the 2022 year. But I'd like to see more, more schools get on that list, and hopefully the same schools will get it a second year. Thank you. All right, Ms. Jury, why don't you come on up here? I'm going to introduce Ms. Uh, Tanya Jury, Dr. Tanya Jury, Principal at Bluegrass Middle School. And she's going to be talking to you all about project-based learning, kind of where she's at in that uh, process this year. As you know, that's a student-centered approach to teaching and learning, kind of force those students to how they're going to acquire their knowledge through those real-life problem-solving skills. So she's got some things she wants to share with you tonight, and I appreciate the work they're doing with their sixth-grade teachers on that process. Thank you, Mr. Sutton. I'm going to pull the presentation up for you real quick. As he said, I am Tanya Dury. I'm the principal at Bluegrass Middle School. I brought some uh, students with me, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves as well. My name is Amilo Rice. My name is Juliana Gregory. My name is Tucker Miller. My name is Amari Jones. So we're going to, they're all sixth graders at Bluegrass, so I'm going to share some information with you, and then I'm, it's best to hear from the kids. So I'm going to let them share um, their experiences with you as well. As Mr. Sutton said, we are talking about project and problem-based learning at Bluegrass. So the first question that some of you may have is, what is... What is that? What is problem-based learning? It's an approach to real-world problems and letting the students figure out the solutions. So we always... um, get the standards, and then we look at, okay, what are we going to do at the end? What's the test we're going to take? But with project-based learning, the students are investigating throughout, and so it's not they just wait until the end to see if they know what they're learning. They learn throughout, and we have benchmarks with that. So as a school, we've been partnering with New Tech Network. Um, New Tech is a national nonprofit organization. They have over 200 schools in 24 states that they're working with, and they work with us, coaching us. Um, They give us professional learning and support us through this process. So in order to affect change at the school level, um, especially with something as large as um, project-based learning is, because it's a new way of thinking and learning, um, there's a hierarchy that we go through to make sure um, that we're doing what's best for kids. And the first one is that we have to have a purpose and we have to have a mission. And that has to be very clear and communicated. Once we do that, we have to make sure that the culture is right. So we want to make sure that the culture in the building is correct, the culture in the classrooms, and we build that. Moving on, once you're able to do that, you establish the policies and the structures, and then that's when you start to see that change in the instruction and eventually the impact on student achievement. And I have some numbers that I'm going to show you here in just a second that are very, very exciting to where um, this project-based learning has impacted the instruction at Bluegrass. Along the bottom, you will see learning um, outcomes. These are things that we ask that these students be able to do before they leave Bluegrass, and that's the standards, knowledge and thinking, oral communication, collaboration, agency, which is uh, being responsible for their own learning, and then written communication. 
so we started with our purpose and our mission, which is we want to be student-centered and have a positive learning environment for all of our students. We started this year with our sixth grade um, and are interested in going to seventh and eighth grade as we continue. So here is the slide that makes me the most excited because I'm a data person. I want to see, is it working? Is it not? Um, so you'll see that we just took the winter already test. And at this point in the year, we would like to have our students at 50% of their annual typical grow, growth goal. And out of our sixth grade students in math, 69% of them have hit that. And in reading, 81%. And again, we should be at 50%, so that speaks volumes to me. The other part that speaks volumes to me is our sixth grade has the lowest discipline numbers in the school, but if you take a look, they have a 77% decrease in major discipline referrals, and so that, that is massive because they want to be in the classrooms, they want to be learning, they're engaged with what they're doing. So that's very important to us as well. We have a video that we're going to show you that gives you just a small glimpse into what their day-to-day -day looks like at Bluegrass. I am Tonya Jury. I am principal at Bluegrass Middle School. Bluegrass this year has piloted project-based and problem-based learning with our sixth graders, and it is an opportunity for our students to really look at hands-on learning in the classroom and how they can apply that to real-life examples. So we have done projects like recycling is one that's going on right now. We had students go around and swab the school to see which area was the germiest, and then they took that and developed their own project. So they wanted to know, is hand sanitizer better or is washing your hands with soap better? So it's really getting the students to see things from a bigger picture instead of just sitting and doing worksheets all day. They're really investigating and doing their own, um, solving their own real world problems. We're very excited to have HCEC TV come in and be able to showcase what our students and our teachers are doing. They've worked very hard this year. This is a new way of thinking, a new way of learning. So students are so used to just sitting in a classroom all day, every day, um, and listening to the teacher. And now really they are taking ownership of their learning. So we're excited to showcase what okay. they've been able to do um, and show how they're actually leading their learning um, while the teachers are more facilitators in that. It's definitely way more interactive with how <clears throat> you do everything. It's not just have a paper, pen and paper, write this, turn it in, good grade, yay. But, but that's not really teaching you anything in life, and that's what school is supposed to do. So I think it's really more efficient. Project-based learning also attacks real-life scenarios and things that I'll be able to actually apply to my life. Basically, what it amounts to is we had the standard I give it to the kiddos to begin with and they start throwing ideas on what they want to find out with it. As long as it can match in with the standards, I'm game for it. <laughs> I can really see um, the communication skills, the listening and speaking skills um, that they're learning in the work that they're doing. I can see that when they interact with me and with their peers and so I try to try to address those things, those positive things too when, I, when I'm working with students instead of coming in and maybe one class period being dedicated to something, you might have a week or two where you're working on a larger project with lots of content from different areas and getting an actual product out of it in the end. Maybe a brochure or a video or some sort of uh, project or community service that you're taking into the community. With these initiatives, we're really kicking it off because last year, I bet it wasn't fun for anybody just because of COVID-19. But this year, we're kicking it off. Centimeters are small compared to inches. So how far do you think your car is going to make on carpet? I know in my classes, whenever students are allowed to do projects like this, they have a lot more buy-in than when it's just me talking at them and them writing down notes. Thank you all for watching and learning more about Bluegrass Middle School. As a principal, it's very exciting for me to walk into a classroom and to see the excitement on the students' faces and to know that they're learning, that they're leading that learning, and that they want to do that. We have several opportunities coming up for across the district to showcase what's going on in the classrooms. We have a teacher panel coming up on February the 24th um, to where teachers who are leading this work will be um, present to answer any questions from 
teachers and principals across the district. On March 24th, we have a student panel um, that will be doing the same thing. And then in April, we're inviting um, groups to come in and actually see it for themselves. So we're very excited um, about the work that's being done. Um, I'm going to let the students real quick tell you the impact that it has had on them this year. Okay, well, project-based learning has mostly impacted me because of the fact that um, I have enough chances to do my, do my work and make it up whenever I want. Um, project-based learning has impacted me and my learning because it allows me to learn more visually and the lessons that we learn in class and connect it to real-life issues. Project-based learning has impacted me by letting me know more about what I am learning and I get to have more hands-on on the subject. Project-based learning has helped me just because most of my grades last year were not good, but now I'm able to get in classes that are for me. They said it best, so um, I appreciate you all having this tonight. I invite you um, to please come and see it for yourselves. It's very, very exciting to see. So if you would like to uh, take a tour through sixth grade classrooms, let me know, and we'll be more than happy to accommodate you to do that. I walked in very good. I walked into Miss Vincent's class one day, and, and they didn't know I was coming. So I'm going to show up, show up, see what's going on. And this young lady right here, Miss Jones, is that right? She, this, she knows I'm telling the truth. She was teaching the class. She was doing the knows and needs to know, and I'm sitting there watching her develop this chart, and the teachers are back there just facilitating. She was teaching. And I told her, what did I tell you that day? I said, you're going to be a teacher someday. Is that a memory telling you that? Uh, and she can do it. So that, that we're, we're, we're growing them right here right now. So appreciate the work. And Miss Swords, if you have something to say, she's done a lot of work with our middle schools on this. So. Good evening. I wanted to take just a second. Um, I've had the opportunity to learn alongside Bluegrass this year, being the director of middle school curriculum, and I'm very appreciative of the opportunities that they're providing the students there. Um, you've got to hear about the opportunities that PBL provides, and I was there the day that Miss Jones was teaching as well, and she was doing a fantastic job, and this is what we want to see in the classroom. I'm so appreciative of uh, Principal Jury and her sixth grade team of teachers. Um, given what schools looked like for us since 2020, we really just want wanted to regain the momentum that we had pre-COVID, and they have worked so hard this year learning something new, um, adding something new to their plate, but they just couldn't wait to provide that opportunity to their students. So we're, we're very appreciative of the work that they've done this year. One other person that I wanted to recognize tonight that may not be here. She's here. Is Janae here somewhere? Okay, uh, I would just like to say thank you to our Director of Health and Family Services. Uh, Janae has always been dedicated to our students and staff in our district, and uh, this past two years has really been a trying time. I mean, she has had to uh, adjust, readjust, go with different uh, adjustments, and it, it has been something that this pandemic uh, has torn us completely apart a lot of times and, and she's her leadership has kept countless students and staff members healthy safe uh, she never shied away from answering the tough questions and uh, being in the hot seat that some parents and uh, uh, I'm assuming board members and staff has even requested from her so uh, uh, she's counseled us other she's helped in other districts uh, just spent endless hours and uh, I'd just like to say a big thank you. We don't have a big medal or plaque or anything for you, but we certainly appreciate you. Thank you. All right. You're more than welcome. Okay. Uh, we have one person that has signed up to uh, speak to us tonight, and uh, Janet Hawkins, would you come up to the podium, please? She's 
Janet here? Janet Hawkins? Okay, well, maybe uh, she decided she didn't want to talk to us then. All right, uh, moving on. Construction updates uh, looks like will be next. Uh, we had our noon meeting uh, today at uh, Rineville, and uh, uh, Alliance Construction was there. They advised us the Central Harden project uh, is progressing along as it should. A uh, little behind on some geothermal drilling, but you know how that goes. It's uh, there's always an excuse, and of course. A really good excuse today for all the rain. So uh, they think they're on schedule. We're going to be uh, giving up the main gym here uh, at the end of this month. And uh, so Central Harden is going to have a hard time. They're going to have to uh, find another place to have their graduation this year and, uh, and play all away, or I guess you would call them all away games, basketball and, and uh girls basketball and boys next year so but we are we're improving things and uh, that's pretty much uh, the instruction that we had from our contractors and then uh, we've got the consent agenda to approve uh, we received information on the governor scholars uh, we're approving a agreement uh, between Hardin County Schools and Family Scholar House uh, we received information on the 2023 and 2024. It's getting out there, isn't it? School years. So uh, uh, we're trying to align, and that is going to happen. Yes, you want to tell a little bit about the alignment of the? Yes. We, over the years, have increased the number of our students who are doing dual credit with ECTC and other universities. And they have a fall break uh, the second week of October. And so we, in order to align with them, uh, Dr. Pate has asked that the school districts change their fall break so that those students, especially the seniors, this is the last opportunity they will really have for a family vacation, um, or at least parents want them that senior year to be on their family vacations. So this will not happen next year. It will be the following year. So we just want to give families enough time uh, to maybe change your reservation in Gulf Shores or Pensacola Beach, Hawaii, wherever it is you go, uh, to change that to the second week, and that will be during the 23-24 school year that you will need to do that. So you have a, about a year and a half to prepare for that. The other details about the calendar as far as when we'll start that school year, uh, that will not come until November of 2022. So I'll have to change my plans in Elizabethtown three years from now, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. And we also received the monthly financial reports. Uh, have a few uh, change orders still out there on East Harden Middle School that we're clearing up. And uh, hopefully uh, everything's really going well out there. The school looks great. Uh, always a few things to complete. And uh, we... Uh, Had the certified personnel and classified uh, actions that's been taken. So, uh, anyone have anything uh, they want to express more concerns on, or uh, we'll need a motion here in a little while to uh, approve, or if you want to pull out anything, you can, uh, and we'll talk about it. Move to approve the consent agenda. Have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Any other discussion? Not. All in favor? Second five are saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And uh, action items. Uh, any action items we need to bring up? I think it uh, went out on the internet today or social media and so forth. Masking is changing effective tomorrow? Immediately. Immediately, okay. Uh, we had, uh, had a lot of discussion about that. Uh, we've heard pros, cons, and 
Some were just opinions, I guess. But uh, we've reached a point where we feel like that uh, this is what we need to do. So uh, we're kind of taking the masking away. Uh, if be glad for you to wear one if you so desire and uh, feel perfectly free to do it. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, it's a bad thing to do, but you're on your own, and uh, we, we certainly appreciate the people that have honored the system that we had, and uh, it's a tough decision to make. we done what we thought was right, and uh, we not always right, but we felt like that we done the best that we could do in this situation. New business? You want to have any new business? Yes, sir. we got things under pretty good control here tonight. <laughs> Superintendent's report. Has the superintendent got a report for us? Uh, yes. Good. Uh, first off, um, it has been uh, an exceptional year. Mr. Uh, Sutton shared exceptional growth today at our noon meeting. Uh, we are back as far as growth before uh, pre-pandemic. We shared that with our principals earlier this week uh, and the amount of work that has gone into that. And part of that success is this year we have been able to be in school, in person, um, all but about six days with the NTI. Two of those were uh, NTI, what we called NTI COVID days, and the other ones were NTI weather days. And then we, of course, had the two snow days. Uh, but that takes a lot of work and dedication on our staff, and we really appreciate uh, their hard work and dedication. This week, uh, see Officer Gillingham over here, uh, is SRO Appreciation Week, and last week was Counselor's Week. And I just want to give a shout out to them. First off, our local uh, law enforcement is a huge safety feature for us. And not only the safety feature, but our students, if you will be in our hallways, you will start to see, I know when I was younger, we would hear, oh, there's an officer, you know, behave. And you would hear parents saying, well, there's an officer, I might tell them what you're doing if you don't behave. And that has totally changed because of the rapport that our officers have in our school buildings, walking in the halls, uh, having lunch with students, talking to them during lunch. So they feel much more comfortable in all of their interactions, not just during the school day, but outside the school as well. Uh, when you go out to eat, you will see them laughing and talking. And instead of our students going the opposite direction, they actually walk up to them to have those conversations. We have had a few situations this year where uh, some students have had made some bad choices, and our students felt comfortable enough to immediately report that to law enforcement and to their school administrators. And then immediately law enforcement works with us uh, to help clear up those situations so that our students continue to feel safe in school. Uh, the week before this one, we celebrated uh, Counselor's Week, and um, it was really fun to go into the schools to see all the special uh, packages they received. I see Wanda Ballard and LaToya back here. Uh, they created packages or uh, gift bags to take out to our counselors uh, just to say thank you for the job that they're doing in the buildings. Also, our nurses received uh, some care packages as well. So just the amazing part that our counselors do each day. Our schools have a form that our students can fill out, need to see the counselor so they don't have to leave the uh, classroom. And when that counselor is ready for them, they can come down and share uh, what they need to with the counselor. So in a time that we've talked about the impact of COVID, counselors are playing a, a significant role in the success of our students. So just a huge shout out to our counselors and to our law enforcement. Thank you for making us better and safer each and every day. That's it. Thank you. And uh, as we've been through the last week or two, our legislators are up there talking about uh, making it mandatory for all schools to have SRO officers. Are they taking their notes from us? Because we've been there for a good while, and we appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Executive session. We, we're okay on that tonight. <clears throat> Board calendar, February the 21st, President's Day. School dismissed uh, February the 25th through the 27th. Uh, I think all the board members here will be uh, at some time or another in the 
Louisville attending a KSBA conference and uh, getting the required hours that we have to have. And uh, March the 17th, we're going to be at East Arden Middle School for the noon meeting in central office at 6 p.m. Anyone have anything else they need to bring up? Not like a motion to adjourn. Make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, second five by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all for coming out. Be safe going home in the rain. Thank you.